Hello, my name is Kain Sander Genius and today's uh, tutorial will be introduction to Flow Networks. I must tell you that Flow Networks is a very interesting topic, really very exciting topic and you will really enjoy it. One thing is that uh, textbooks tend to make it look a little bit more difficult than it is. So it's not a difficult concept, it's very easy as you will see in a few minutes. The explanations will be very simple and it will be with examples. So you can grab a pen and a paper if you really want to follow through uh, uh, in the right way. So as a reminder, click on subscribe button so that you get notified when I make the next lesson. So this will be the content of what we are going to cover today. So let's just jump right in and get started. What is a flow network? Of course, you know uh, what a network is. But flow network is a, a kind of a different kind of network. The first thing about flow network is that it is a directed graph. G written as G V E that have a source S and a sync, right? So when we talk about a directed graph, we are talking about graph that have arrows that that have arrows as edges. So if you have something like this this, this, this. If you have the arrows having edges, that is what directed graph mean. It's possible to have a graph like this, and this is not directed graph, this is directed graph. Okay, so just to be on the same page. A flow network is a graph G. So this is the name of the graph G and is written as G, V, E. V stand for what? It stand for collection of the vertices. Vertices are simply nodes. So V represent list of all nodes or vertices in the graph. So to illustrate, let me take my pen again. So in this case, if we have A, B, C, in this case, V will be equal to A, B, C. So that is why it is represented G, V, E. V represent, it has to be capital letter of V, the set of all the vertices, and E represents the set of all the edges, right? So edge is represented in this way, I will explain to you. Let's say edge between A and B is represented as A comma B. So this is edge going from A to B, this edge here. B, C, B, C represent is the edge going from B to C. And later we'll check if A, B is the same as B, A. That we'll see in later parts of flow network because this is very important. Now E stands for list of all the edges. So in this our example, if you want to represent E, you can say E is equal to set of A, B, right? B, C, and what? A, B, B, C, and C, A. is as simple as this. So this is capital letter of V and capital letter of E. So this is what defines a flow network. All right, there is another thing you also need to know and that is the concept of C or capacity. In a flow network, we are talking about, also we talk about capacity. So C stand for capacity. Capacity represents the amount of traffic that can pass through the network. And C is represented the capacity of a, an edge. Capacity of an edge. So we are talking about capacity of the edge. So more like amount of traffic that can travel through the edge. So if you have A and you have B so what amount of traffic that can pass through this place? So it's represented as C, A, B. And it's normally a particular number. 
All right, so knowing uh, uh, what a flow network means, uh, vertices, V, edges, capacity, the UV you see here is uh, just arbitrary, represents from one node of, uh, from the edge U, sorry, from the, the node of vertex B to the vertex C. All right, to get it very clear, let's just take a typical example to illustrate all of this. So let's take a typical network of a number of nodes. So let's say, so we have, yes, another thing you need to know about flow network is about the source, the source and the sink. So the source is normally represented as S and the sink is normally represented as T. So the source is the starting vertex or the first node in the flow network that represents where the flow or the network starts from is called the source and where the network terminates is called the sink. All right, let's draw this network. So this goes here, it's a directed graph we mentioned so there must be arrows pointing from node to node so all the edges all the edges between each between all the nodes must have uh, a, an arrow or a pointer so this is what we have let's pull this one back this particular graph is what we are going to use uh, throughout. Let me let me draw a better one. All right. So what is happening? Uh, I'm talking about ink. All right. So we have a from here to here. I don't know why this thing is oh, shaped. Again, let me try for the last time. It's simply not giving me a straight line. All right, so let's see. I'll take a black pen. So let's, let me go from here. Take it easy. Good, so we got it this time. So we have from here to here. So, okay, maybe if you are drawing on a paper, it will be clearer. So now, you already know that these are the, the nodes or the vertex. So you can actually say V is equal to, so you can actually make it up in case we have A, B, C, D. So you can make up this that is a homework I'm giving you so make it up and also make up the the edge maybe I can just give you the first one so the first one is S A this one the first one is S okay so you make up the remaining one so now I want to tell you about capacity capacity is the amount of traffic that can pass through an edge. So we are talking about capacity of an edge. SA will have a capacity of three. So what it means is C, SA equal to what? Equal to three. SB have a capacity of two. AC has a capacity of two. CT has a capacity of three. DT has a capacity of 2 and we have a capacity of 3 between CD capacity of 3 here and capacity of 1 and 3 so what I want you to do now find capacity of C S B equal to and so on and so forth now these are the capacities of this of these uh, edges one thing you need to know is that sometimes you may see two numbers in each of the edge. Let's say two. 
Now what is this tool? That we are going to see in the next tutorial. But take note of these expressions and these notations used here. So this is uh, the, the way it works. But before I go, take note that we have 3 plus 2. Total uh, capacity coming out from the source must be equal to the total capacity going into the edge. So 3 plus 2. That is, we are talking about this capacity 3 plus 2 coming out from the solves is equal to 5. And the capacity of the two edges going into the sink T should also be 5. So now in some textbooks you'll see each of the edge may have two numbers. Yeah, have two, three. The first one will always be smaller than or equal to the capacity. So the second number is a capacity. So what is the first number? That takes us to the next tutorial that says what is a flow. So we are going to start with what is a flow in the next tutorial. Thank you for viewing and remember to click and subscribe.